Welcome, Welcome to, to Heartful, Heartful Conversations. Conversations. And very heartfelt too. Yes. So today we will talk about storms. Yes. And I'm your co-host, Brendan Roberts. And I'm your host. <laughs> <laughs> Switch to the switcheroo. You're my guest. I'm the host. Are you now? Okay. <laughs> okay. We're both the hosts. We need to get that right. Okay. So I've felt the calling to do a podcast many years ago and finally <laughs> i'm answering that call we are answering that call so this is our first episode yes this sounds like one of the saints doesn't it or maybe or maybe some of the saints that put off um god's call for a rainy day yeah delayed obedience <laughs> and <laughs> but thank you god for the grace to finally do this amen and we will talk about today's gospel okay that is uh, the gospel according to mark chapter 4 verse 35 with the coming of evening that same day he said to them let us cross over to the other side and leaving the crowd behind they took him just as he was in the boat and there were other boats with him then it began to blow a great gale and the waves were breaking into the boat so that it was almost swamped. But he was in the stern, his head on the cushion asleep. They woke him and said to him, Master, do you not care? We are lost. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Quiet now, be calm. And the wind dropped and there followed a great calm. Then he said to them, Why are you so frightened? Have you still no faith? They were overcome with awe and said to one another, Who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. And this is the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Jesus Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Wow, amazing. So have you felt that you are in the midst of a great storm in your life? Think about the challenges that you've had when you felt like big waves are like swamping, swamping you, like you're in a boat of troubles. And yeah. have you experienced... A lot of storms in life, hubby? Absolutely. And these storms can be everything from losing a job, being unemployed. Because there's times even through our marriage at the start of it, I had no job. I was in between jobs. But God is the, the gracious one and the awesome one to actually take us out of that season. Because it can be hard. Uh, and a storm when you're looking, because I, I actually worked out that I applied for over 100 jobs to actually get one. That's like 1%. And yet, you know, we were called to persevere. There's uh, messages in the gospel where it talks about being persevering and knocking. It's like that widow knocking on the judge's door. And we're called to be persevering and knock on God's door. And those st storms also hurt because you're hurting financially. You're hurting as the pro a, like provider or co-provider within a family. At that stage, uh, Ellie had only just come to New Zealand. So then I'm hurting because I couldn't be uh, providing in that aspect of it. And storms also come with the death of uh, loved ones. Within one year, I lost two members um, of my family. And that was my mum and one of my sisters. and But now it's like half of my family have actually lost. And they, they, they are storms because you have to go through that process of healing. And we also have a, had a car accident. That was a storm because you, you sort of come into the unknown when... Um, like Ali had a brain concussion as a result of that. And I also had, it's sort of, there's a lot of storms because I also uh, was diagnosed with uh, skin cancer. 
It was stage two melanoma. And that was a storm and also a test of our faith because it meant uh, actually surrendering all to God and trusting in him. But it's amazing because through the doctors and the prayers of so many friends and people in our community, we, uh, God said, be calm to that storm. And he, he healed, healed me through th that whole process. And, you know, God brings joy out of those really, because a storm, we're frightened, right? Storms can be sudden unsettling i'm also just thinking about when i had trouble at um with you know like in employment in the past where you it's like sleepless nights and then when your wife's suffering there's sleepless nights as well because she couldn't sleep and you know it was very troubling for her and what kind of storms would you like to talk about darling well, I actually wanted to share what I learned from the kids today because I serve as a catechist in the children liturgy where in the priest calls the children and then we have our own time to talk about the gospel. And I showed them this photo. First, I showed Jesus sleeping, very peaceful. <laughs> and then I showed them a photo of the raging storm and Jesus putting out his hand to calm the storm. And then I also showed them the calm when everything was calm. And it just really moved me so much because the, the backstory is I said to my husband that sometimes I felt um, overwhelmed with the many services that we do, with the ministries that we handle or the ministries that I am serving. And I was thinking of stepping down. And then the message the following day was, I will never forget about it. The message was fulfill your ministry that you serve, whether it's convenient or inconvenient. That, And that, that spoke to my heart, like true, I have to persevere in faith. And today that even became, that message even became stronger because I am not just teaching this, these kids, they are teaching me. They are actually helping me grow in my faith. Because today when I showed them um, a photo of the raging storm, one of the kids, um, a girl, a little girl, she's probably five, she said to me, Ah, if I was in the boat and there was a great storm, I'll probably jump and ride the waves. And then the other kids were like, no, you will drown. And then she said, no, remember, Jesus was in the boat. So that means even if I jump, he will save me. And I was so moved because, wow, the faith of a child. And to me, that spoke to me a message of when life storms attack us, when life storms makes us really scared. Actually, the kid made me realize it's possible to have fun in the storm. Like the way she said she would jump and she would ride in the waves because her heart is at peace that Jesus is with her. That no matter what, Jesus would jump into the water and save her and she even told me you know that jesus walks on water right and i was like true <laughs> like true jesus walks on water so why would she felt like why would i be afraid jesus walks in water it really speaks of trust doesn't it childlike yes. trust childlike faith yeah and, and it really spoke to my heart and i was like true because when life storms when i experience life storms I was telling my husband, I'd, I'd probably if I was in the boat, I'd probably be freaking out and screaming. <laughs> the ah! first one, <laughs> probably the first one to wake up, Jesus. <laughs> and then this little boy, I think he he's five. He said to me, "You know what? When, when I showed him, uh, when I showed them this photo of Jesus sleeping, he said, "Well, if I was in the boat, I would." you know what I would do? I would just sit with Jesus. 
I would put my hands together in prayer and I will pray. I will be so calm, even if the waves are big, I will just close my eyes because what? why should I be scared? Jesus is with me. He might, he might be sleeping, but he's still with me. I'm beside him. So I was like, oh my gosh. And remember when you were telling me, you said that you, you, he would also get the other kids to pray. Oh, yes. He said yeah. he will ask the disciples. Mm. He, was, he was imagining himself <laughs> yeah. as with the disciples, not even yeah. with other kids. Yeah. He was like, and I will tell the disciples. I will tell them, hey, let's pray. Fantastic. Let's put our hands together and pray. And that really touched me. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is beautiful. And I was like, oh, I was sharing this to other catechists as well. And she was like, I'm having goosebumps. That is such a beautiful message. And yeah, like the faith of kids, they're, they're very, what do you call it? Their innocence, their pureness, like their, their trust. Now, now I know why Jesus wants us to be childlike in faith. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And what about in your life, honey? What storms have you had? Oh my gosh, I've been through a lot of storms, <laughs> countless storms in life. And yeah, it's not easy to go through a storm because sometimes I, I can relate to Peter when he was like focused on the big waves, on on the wind. Sometimes we get focused with our problems I and mean, personally um sometimes i magnify the storm rather than god's power sometimes sometimes <laughs> hey not all the time sometimes okay. i pray too <laughs> oh yeah and that's what i you know honor you for for those times where you call out you know for prayer and you call out for god's hand because um that's really important and it's um beautiful to see and i also think um the other thing is we've in our um, and I'm, what I really admire in Ali and love in Ali is her compassionate heart and seeing that when there's storms in other people's lives, she's like one of the first to reach out and to offer, you know, loving help. And whether that's a prayer, whether that's um, practical help, whether it's going to the hospital and, you know, making food to, to someone that doesn't like hospital food. And, you know, just being that loving support and also in her Facebook, just being so um, inspiring and, and, and that's that's encouraging people in their, their storms of life. So I really honor you, darling. Thank you. I try to be, but actually <laughs> I'm more like a frantic person. If, if, there, if between us, you're the calm I'm the storm. Some, <laughs> you're, sometimes. You're the calm to my storm, and you know that. Yeah, it is difficult to really have that childlike faith of there's nothing to worry. Like, there, it's okay. The storm is there, but Jesus is there too. So, and just having that reality, that realization that you're never alone in the storm. And I told the kids today that. We're like in a boat, you know, I, I, I showed them a photo so that they can see the visual of we're like we're in the boat of life. And sometimes the waters are calm. We're just sailing peacefully. We're happy. But there are times when we're scared, we're upset. And then I ask them what they're scared about. And then most of them, oh, when my mom turns off the light at night, when oh. I go to bed, I really feel scared. And then some, some, some kids said, oh, I'm really afraid when I need to go to school and I, and I don't know what to say to the teacher. And then I said, I said, to, I asked them, what do you do when you're afraid? And then they said, oh, now that we see these photos they said they will call out on jesus mm. and they know that jesus can calm their heart so how Amen. beautiful is that that Very they beautiful. have that understanding that when they call out on jesus he can make their hearts calm yeah it's absolutely beautiful it's it's that you know we talk about and the innocence of the child and i think the practicality also is that when it comes to storms, I've also seen, uh, like, 
what God does is he sends angels. Mm. And he sent you many times as an angel to to help people. And often a lot of people don't see that. And we also, when we had our car accident, someone, a friend of ours, um, if you're listening, God bless you. Um, and thank you once again because... Well, a lot of them, actually. Yeah. I, I mean, we've had friends that support us, you know, when... Not only the car accident, uh, when I had my, uh, when I was just coming out of the hospital, someone couriered us food, you know, dinner for that night. So we have, you know, angels that God sends us. And I'm sure the one, the storms you've been through, you know, if you just reflect now, you'll be able to see that God sent you angels. It might be just the person that smiled to you. You know, when, when you needed it, you know, when you were feeling down or it might be a, a Facebook post that lifted you up, could be even a scripture someone shared with you. God sends those angels and we should also ask God, God, help me, help me, send someone my way to, to just give me that boost that I need. Yeah, it's true. Really, it's, it's amazing how God sends angels on earth when we are going through storms and i pray that you have those people in your lives and if you feel like you're alone um reach out all you need actually is to reach out and to believe in faith that god will step in and help you in your situation and it's amazing when when we had our car accident it's amazing because that's when floodgates of 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 um of help came like we we would receive grocery items from friends we there was an outpouring of prayers and there's been a lot of help really like people that we didn't uh, even and also someone we we were 3 hours away and mm-hmm. someone came like the next day a work day and came and picked us up, you yes. know, to take us back. Uh, and so that's a six-hour journey mm. on a weekday. Like, so they came after work. Wow. Yeah, that's what the love. sacrifice of yeah, love. It is. Yeah, it entails um, sacrifice. But then the reward from God, but you know, do it's just like you can't outgive um, God in his generosity. Amen. But also you're not helping others because you want to receive a reward (laughs) but because he's just really there's so much goodness like wherever we look if only we take time to look within ourselves and outside of us um, we can really see how much god's goodness is everywhere yeah amen and so that's loving compassion uh, working in action yeah so it's so amazing today's um, gospel and also while reflecting as well, I feel like, true, wh- why have I doubted God's goodness? Like, it made me realize there has been a lot of storms in my life where in I panicked, I cried. Why did I not just pray <laughs> and calmly called on god you know it's like my immediate response to to storms is fight or flight yeah like panicking mm. like it, because though and i realized that happens because i put problems on my shoulders i don't give them to god so which leads me to a beautiful message from a priest a very good priest that I went to confession and I was sharing with him all the storms that I've experienced in life and experiencing in life. And he told me to surrender, abandon and embrace. And surrender means leaving it all to God, saying, God, this really hurts. Uh, My situation is really hurting me, but I choose to give it to you. So you're acknowledging the hurt, first of all. Yes, you acknowledge what you're feeling, that you are really down, because God can handle that. And he became human. He is fully human and fully divine. So he's been through all those emotions and he would understand. So you give it to God. You say, Lord, I, I, I am really down and really hurting, but I give it to you. 
and abandon is he gave me a vision or um he he described to me that you become like a child wherein there is the cross of christ and you embrace that cross and and you say lord i abandon to you all my heart's longings all my heart's desires my desires is nothing compared to the grandest plan that you have for my life i do not see the the light at the end of the tunnel right now but i abandon to your embrace i abandon to your grace so it's like you're putting yourself into the mighty hands of god like lord this is what i feel but i am yours and you can handle this (laughs) and then lastly is embrace that you embrace whatever season that you're in you don't look at other people because this is what i struggle with my husband knows this (laughs) like i compare my life's chapter one to someone else's chapter 10 like why are they blessed and then we're not you know (laughs) i have that and then I, i tend to be which is very wrong it is a sin actually to be jealous of other people's blessings it's not good because then you are not seeing god's goodness in your own life remember that ellie (laughs) so yeah because i tend to like when someone else receives the prayer that i am still praying for i tend to look like why (laughs) why Why they what (laughs) what about me (laughs) don't forget me (laughs) but the thing is you know jesus doesn't forget about us you know we are in the mind of god that's what my husband said in his talk in all eternity so how amazing is that so i'll just correct so we have been on the mind of God for all eternity. So it's not like God just thinks, I'm going to create Ali, or I'm going to create Sam, or I'm going to create David one day when he's bored. No, because there's no before or after with God. That's how awesome God's love is. That's how deep and personal it is that you have been on the mind of God for all eternity. Yes, amen. So sometimes I forget that when we're going through storms. Um, Sometimes I feel like other people's lives are moving really well and like I'm stuck here. But then when I take time to count my blessings, it's actually not true because God has brought me far and really far from how it was before and when you looked out the window and you saw this is during the car accident times and just saw life flashing by and just being stuck Mm, yeah Yeah. you remind me of that (laughs) because yeah there was one of the symptoms of that i had when after i was diagnosed with brain concussion is depression and it's very difficult to to handle because i don't know the emotions are just there and then i remember one night no one day (laughs) i was looking out the window because i had body pains all over my body as a result of the car accident and then i looked out the window and i saw um people going to work uh, kids like getting ready for school and it's like it was everything everything's busy outside my window it's like their lives are going well like they're going to their respective um event of the day and i I was just there stuck in my room and i was like i got really angry at god (laughs) and i said lord why did you bring me here in new zealand if i would just be hurt you know, I was I, I had so much resentment and I was like, why did you uproot me? Because that's how I felt. I felt like I was uprooted from my home country and then I was brought in New Zealand and then we had a car accident and then I was like, what is happening? Like, why is my life like this? You know, and, and maybe you who's listening right now, maybe you can relate with how I feel. It's like your life was put to a stop. But actually, when you look back, it's not a stop, but it was just a pause. And in that pause, in that suffering, in that pain, that's when you actually feel God's love the most. And it's ironic because, yeah, I remember looking out again (laughs) that night. And then I was like, I saw the moon and then the stars. And I was like, Lord, 
why why did you make me go through this and then i just felt in my heart that the one the mighty hands who placed the stars in the sky the mighty hands who placed the moon where it should be the one who created the brightness of the sky is the same god who loves me and that was enough and i was like true <laughs> like despite the pain despite the the pause in my life that sounds like pause of a cat <laughs> the pause 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 (laughs) it's like um, i was like wow it's it's amazing like if only we look at the bigger picture it's like our problems is like but a dot in or drop in the ocean yeah like compared to the vastness of god's love for us the vastness of god's mercy for us it's like yeah it's like a dot really you can only see it under a microscope yeah compared to god's love yeah, it's like, but then when you're going through that, it's like you had the the most terrible problem. Like, I mean, personally, I feel like, ah, oh, this is the biggest problem, and they're all like, it's 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 the steaming it's from like a mountain, yeah, rather than a drop. Yeah, and also when like you're looking at it yourself. Yeah, true, and it's you like can't see beyond the mountain. Yeah, it's like your eyes are like blocked, and that's probably why I. I had a dream of Our Lady. We are in um, that. It was during COVID time in 2020 when everything was in chaos. And in the dream, I was invited by this beautiful lady, and then she told me, "Look to the right, look to the left, look up, and look down." And so I did, and all I see. All I saw at the time in the dream was chaos. Um, people are sick. Um, there are wars. Like, there was so much darkness in the world. And I felt really... There was a deep loneliness in my heart. And then she said, Now, look in the eyes of Jesus. I look to the left, look to the right. Look up and look, look down. down. And then he said... And then she said... Focus. Look, look into the eyes of Jesus yep. and then gaze into the eyes of Jesus and focus. Mm. Fix your eyes on Jesus. And then when she said that, I saw the most beautiful pair of eyes I've ever seen. So they were mine. <laughs> no, they were not yours. <laughs> they were so beautiful. Yeah. And when I saw those eyes, it felt like nothing mattered nothing else mattered not even though the chaos was still there Th- that's an amazing thing the chaos was still all over on my left on my right up and down i could still see chaos but when i looked in the eyes of jesus i was lost in his love i felt a love so strong a love that yeah a love that comes the storm amen yeah it's beautiful it was beautiful and i just think that no just want to reiterate no matter what you're going through just surrender abandon and embrace because i also think of the scripture where it says that it's like without problems we won't persevere we won't develop endurance and it actually helps develop our character and not only that i think it's even more important you will be able to understand someone else going through either mm. a similar thing or the same thing. So you, God will be able to use you as an angel to help someone else. Yes, I love how you put that because it is true. Um, it is St. Catherine of Siena that says, um, nothing great is ever achieved without enduring much. Mm. So when you go through something difficult when you suffer it actually expands your heart so that when you see other people suffering you become more compassionate because you feel like oh i've i've been through there i know how it feels and i've been i have hit rock bottom so when you see people who are struggling your heart just have that space for reaching out for 
extending that help to those who are suffering. Amen. So, shall we close now? All right. Shall we say a prayer for our listeners? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, you want to do first? You, you start. Okay. So, let's um, put ourselves. Let's always uh, acknowledge that we are always in the presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this first episode that we have we pray that this will touch the hearts of those who are going through storms in their lives those who are suffering those who are in need of your help of your grace and lord we thank you that you are all powerful you are mightier than any storms you are mightier than any waves and I pray that we always remember as we go through our own storms that you are always there with us. That you are always, always there to save us. Always there to offer your helping hand, your healing touch. And we just want to praise and honor and glorify you, Lord. For you are mighty. You are our God. You are our healer. You are our provider. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we pray, Lord Jesus, for uh, those who are watching or listening today, Lord. And we pray for whatever they're going through, Jesus. We pray that you'll send them angels to support them. Send them angels to help them. And Lord, we just pray that uh, you will massage their hearts, Lord. That you will comfort them when they feel down. And that, as scripture says, Lord, that the right time you will raise them up on eagles' wings and they will soar on eagles' wings and will not grow faint. We just pray for your amazing blessings on those that need your blessings the most, Lord. And we just pray that, uh, yeah, that their lives will, they will embrace the season, Lord, and that they will not despair, but they will hope in you. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Son, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for watching or listening to our first episode and hope yes. to see you in our next. I know. And as they always say, like, <laughs> click, subscribe and do whatever else is needed. <laughs> whatever else is needed. God bless. God bless. Bye. Bye.